Hello, everyone. This is the CircuitPython weekly meeting for June 3rd, um, 2024. This is the time of the week where we get together to talk about all things CircuitPython. My name is Tim, and I'm sponsored by Adafruit to work on CircuitPython. Uh, CircuitPython is a version of Python that's designed to run on tiny computers called microcontrollers, and the development of CircuitPython is primarily sponsored by Adafruit. So if you would like to help uh, support Adafruit and CircuitPython, consider purchasing hardware from adafruit.com. This meeting gets hosted each week on the Adafruit Discord server. You can join anytime by going to adafru.it slash discord. We hold the meeting in the CircuitPython dev text channel and the CircuitPython voice channel. The meeting typically occurs on Mondays at 2 p.m. U.S. Uh, Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific, except when that coincides with the U.S. holiday. In the notes doc, there is a link to a calendar which you can view online or add to your favorite calendar app. Uh, we'll also send out notifications in the Discord to those that have the CircuitPythonistas role. So that's another thing uh, having that role gets you. In addition to being able to speak, is uh, we'll ping that role when there are changes to the uh, scheduled date or time. The notes doc that accompany, uh, excuse me, there is a notes doc that accompanies the meeting. You can contribute to that document beforehand. The final notes doc will include timestamps to go along with the video, so you can use that document and skip around and view the parts of the video that interest you most. Video tends to run, or the meeting, I should say, tends to run 30 to 60 minutes, depending on how many folks we have. After each meeting, we'll post a link for the next uh, week's meeting uh, notes document in the CircuitPython dev channel over on Discord. You can check the pinned messages in that CircuitPython dev channel throughout the week to find the uh, notes doc for the upcoming meeting, and you are uh, more than welcome to submit hug reports, uh, text, uh, status updates, and um, in the weeds topics throughout the week if they uh, happen to come to mind for you. Um, the meeting gets held in five parts. The first part will be community news. That's a look at all things CircuitPython and Python on hardware in the community. It's a chosen set of items from the Python on microcontrollers uh, newsletter, which goes out on Mondays. The second part is the state of CircuitPython, the libraries, and Blinka. That one is a quantitative overview of the entire project. It's a chance to look at the project by the numbers, separate from our status updates. The third part and the first of our two round robins is Hug Reports. Hug Reports is an opportunity to highlight the good things that folks are doing. Can take a moment to recognize awesome folks in our community and beyond. Uh, the fourth part is Status Updates. Status Updates is another round robin section. Uh, and this one you can report on what you've been up to. Uh, take a couple minutes to talk about what you've been doing in the last week since the past meeting and what you'll be up to uh, over the next week until the next meeting. The fifth and final part is In the Weeds. In the Weeds is an opportunity for more long form discussions. Those can either uh, be topics that came out of status updates or they can be identified ahead of time as too long for status updates. Uh, if you happen to think of a In the Weeds topic, feel free to go ahead and write that in down at the bottom of that document. There's a In the Weeds section and when we uh, get to the end of the meeting, we'll start reading them uh, from there or uh, pass the uh, baton, so to speak, to whoever's got that topic. So uh, that covers how the meeting will go. So with that, I will uh, get scrolled to the right spot, take the first timestamp and read you the community news. Go. Uh, first up in community news this week, MicroPython 1.23 was released. A new major release of MicroPython has gone out with several major feature upgrades. There are links here to the full release notes on GitHub as well as the downloads page. Uh, the quote that was here in the newsletter says, this release of MicroPython adds support for dynamic USB devices defined in Python, adds new OpenAMP, TLS, and VFS modules, completely revamps the WebAssembly port to add proxying between JavaScript and Python, and implements significant code size optimizations for frozen modules. Uh, there are also many other enhancements and bug fixes, uh, all of which sound really cool to me. So uh, got that to look forward to. Uh, next up, we have running Arduino and MicroPython side by side on multi-core microcontrollers. Uh, and this comes uh, 
uh, out of one of those items in the MicroPython 1.23 update. So with version 1.23, uh, MicroPython now has support for asymmetric multiprocessing on multi-core microcontrollers based on the industry standard OpenAMP framework. This enables Arduino users to run both an Arduino sketch and a MicroPython program simultaneously on multi-core modules and to communicate between the two. Uh, there is a link here, looks like probably to the Arduino uh, blog, yep. Uh, the communication between Arduino and MicroPython is facilitated using Remote Procedure Calls, RPC. This allows us to benefit from the simplicity of using MicroPython while unlocking access to all of Arduino's rich libraries from the MicroPython code, uh, which is looking really cool. So uh, cool stuff there. Next up, we have Project of the Week this week was a uh, building Alan Wake's angel lamp. Uh, Stargirl builds a fantastic Alan Wake angel lamp cosplay prop using CircuitPython. A fantastic 3D print is crowned by an Adafruit Trinket M0 and the Nudes Filament LEDs. There are links here uh, out to Thea Code's blog uh, if you would like to learn more about that project. Next up is a uh, tutorial that is posted on YouTube. Uh, this one caught my eye this week, getting started with CircuitPython on the Zhao RP2040. Uh, this is a new step-by-step -step tutorial on how to download and install CircuitPython on the Seed Studio Zhao RP2040. That's a module made by Seed Studio with the Raspberry Pi RP2040 microcontroller. And there are links here over to uh, Leon Anavi channel on YouTube, which is the person who made this video. Uh, I have not seen this one, but I've seen uh, some other of their tutorial content, and uh, it was very informative, the ones that I did watch. So it uh, looks like cool stuff there. It's nice to see more folks getting involved in uh, CircuitPython tutorials and content. Next up, the web serial bookmarklet. Uh, Serial Fruit Connect, a bookmarklet to replace Adafruit Blue Fruit Connect apps, plus add Wi-Fi, USB, and BLE for all. There are links here to Adafruit Playground page that explains this and a GitHub uh, page with the repository. This is basically a uh, bookmarklet, which is kind of a little bit of JavaScript you can add as a bookmark in your browser that adds a little control panel to the web page that you're on uh, that facilitates communicating to the CircuitPython device that you have connected to your computer. So really cool stuff, uh, elegant uh, way to add it in with the bookmarklet there so it can work on different pages and do different stuff without installs. So I thought that was a really neat item this week. Uh, all of these items and many more can be found in this week's newsletter. The Python on Microcontrollers weekly newsletter is a CircuitPython community-run newsletter that's emailed every Monday. The complete archives are available at adafruitdaily.com. It highlights the latest Python on hardware-related news from around the web, including CircuitPython, Python, and MicroPython developments. To contribute your own news or project, you can edit next week's draft on GitHub. Uh, just open a PR, uh, changing the draft file in there if you'd like to go that route. Um, you, uh, yeah, with the, whatever changes you want into that uh, file, you can PR them, uh, or you can also email cpnews at adafruit.com or tag a post with hashtag CircuitPython on Mastodon, Blue, St Blue Sky, or uh, X. Uh, next up, I will take a timestamp and we will talk about the state of CircuitPython, the libraries, in Blinka. All right, so we've got... Uh, Let's see here, let me get, there we are. All right, so state of CircuitPython, the libraries in Blinka. This part is a quantitative overview of the entire project. It gives us a chance to look at the health of the project separate from our status updates. We'll talk about the project uh, overall and then separately discuss the core, the libraries and Blinka. So I will kick us off with the overall section. Uh, this week uh, overall, in the past seven days, we had 18 pull requests merged by 17 authors, which is great to see. Uh, some names in here that were uh, newer or less familiar uh, to my eye at least. So these folks might be newer contributors or less frequent, uh, or it could just be the case that I haven't happened to, to run across their username before as well. Um, but those users this week, thanks to them, they are uh, Jersu11, uh, Tim Chinowski, uh, Fet, uh, let's see, Fet's SN LEDs, um, SC-Bin, Grippy98, Brent Picasso, uh, Nop Nop, 2002, uh, Matthias C. Nowak Dev, uh, uh, 
Chung Soft uh, Viens Dash Quan Yin. Uh, my apologies if I messed up any of the pronunciations, but thanks to those folks again who might be newer or less frequent contributors, uh, and thanks as well to all of the more uh, familiar names uh, on the list that we see more frequently each week. Um, across the past seven days, uh, we had six reviewers for all those pull requests, so thanks to our reviewers. Looks like mostly the usual folks, but thanks as always to uh, Maker Melissa, Dan, Scott, Just Mobilize, Brent, and Jeff, uh, all for doing reviews this week. That, uh, excuse me, in the last seven days again, we had, uh, in terms of issues, 14 issues closed by 10 people, with eight new issues opened up by six people. Uh, next up, I will pass it off to Scott, if you're available to tell us about the uh, core. Yeah, thanks, Tim. Okay, uh, eight pull requests merged uh, for the core. This is just the C, Python, uh, the C core of CircuitPython. Uh, new folks on the core side, Tim, Tim Chinowski, Fets and LEDs, Bablock B is infrequent, Brent, Capo Brent Picasso, Chung Sof, I think VN is for Vietnam, and Tuan Nguyen, uh, thanks to all those folks for, and Bill ADAT is all authors uh, for pull requests in the core. Three reviewers, myself, Dan, and Jeff. Uh, we have 27 open pull requests, so we're, we're just over that single page listing. Uh, so it'd be take, good to take a look and get things in. Um, although I think I merged one, at least one in earlier, so we may be under it already. Um, these uh, stats were taken overnight, so they don't take into account what we've done today. Uh, Issues-wise for the core, for the last week, we had four closed issues by three people and two open by two people, for, so we're down two, which is great. For a total of 676 open issues, uh, we use active. Uh, we use milestones to uh, prioritize work for Adafruit-funded folks. Uh, that means that if you have an issue that's marked maybe long term, but still want to work on it, we're happy to help you. We just won't do it ourselves. Um, on our radar, uh, the highest priority for us is uh, issues in 9.1, and that's that'll be the next uh, kind of major stable release. Um, and we have four open issues there, so we're getting close. Um, turn the corner on that and, and we'll just do some bug hunting and a release candidate. Um, so that's this, and we have zero issues not assigned to milestone, so we're caught up triage wise. That's it for the core. All right, thanks, Scott. Next up is a section covering the libraries. Uh, these are the Python level code. Uh, libraries are all shared on uh, GitHub where you can find them under names like Adafruit underscore CircuitPython underscore and then the name of whatever library it is. Uh, they tend to fall into kind of two main buckets, either a driver library that will uh, serve as a driver for some particular piece of hardware to allow you to interface with it, or a helper library, which is kind of a higher level uh, helper that takes care of some of the more complex or minute details uh, in order to make your project code be a bit cleaner and um, less, uh, less intensive, less complex. So across all of those libraries this week, we had six pull requests merged by six authors. Uh, thanks again to Jersu11 um, and Mateus uh, Z. Now Novak Dev, um, uh, again, as the names that were newer or less frequent to me. Uh, thanks also this week to KB Suram, Dan, uh, Justin, and Jerry Nadell. And we had five reviewers, so thanks to them Dan, uh, Scott, Justin, Brent, and Jeff. Of the pull requests that were merged this week, they were all on the newer side. The oldest one was only 10 days, and uh, the newest ones were one day. That leaves us after the week with 58 open pull requests. Uh, the oldest one is a draft at 655 days. The newest one is one day. There were eight issues closed in the past week by seven people, and there were three new issues opened up by two people. Uh, so we're net down on issues in libraries as well. That leaves us with 849 open issues across all the libraries. And of those, there are 102 of them that are labeled as good first issues, which you can find over at circuitpython.org contributing, which is the place that you should head if you are interested in getting involved in the CircuitPython project. Um, on that page, you'll find a list of open PRs and open issues. Uh, a good place to get started is look through the open PRs, find something that is either uh, interesting to you or that you've got hardware for. Um, take a look at the PR, look at the code changes. If you do have hardware, uh, go ahead and test it out and then just leave a comment on GitHub on the PR, letting us know that you took a look or that you tried it out and what you found. 
Once you get comfortable with that, we can uh, get you leveled up to leave official reviews over on GitHub as well. Uh, when, uh, if or when you're ready to get your hands dirty with some code, you can, on that circuitpython.org slash contributing page, you can click over to the issues tab. Uh, there is a drop down near the top that will let you filter the issues by label if you want to find the good first issue ones. And those are the ones, again, that are identified as being, um, you know, a little bit on the easier side, less complex, maybe less intensive in terms of the actual uh, changes that are required. The majority of the ones that are open right now are uh, Display.io examples for sensor libraries. If anyone's interested in working on those, you can find them listed over on circuitpython.org slash contributing on the issues page again. Um, we do have guides for contributing um, to CircuitPython and the libraries using Git and GitHub. Uh, plus, there's always folks available on GitHub who are more than willing to help you out. So if you're trying to get involved, you are trying to um, review a, a PR, or if you're trying to uh, make your own PR in order to resolve some issue and you're having trouble, you need some help, um, please feel free to come over to the Discord and ask for help there. Uh, certainly, somebody will be happy to uh, to help you out. We want everyone to be able to contribute in whatever way uh, they're able to. Um, in terms of library PyPI uh, weekly download stats, this week we had 91,601 PyPI downloads across all the 326 libraries. Uh, the top 10 list is here in the notes doc if you'd like to take a look at it. And then in terms of the libraries updated in the last seven days, uh, the ones that caught my eye uh, over in the community bundle were a uh, Display.io uh, driver for the ST7565, uh, the CircuitPython TOML library, and then a driver for a touch overlay, the GT911. Those are all in the community bundle, uh, and there are a couple of the Adafruit ones listed here if anyone's interested. Uh, with that, I will pass it over to Maker Melissa if you're available to tell us about Blinka. I am. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> Blinka is our CircuitPython compatibility layer for MicroPython, Raspberry Pi, and other single board computers. And this week we had four pull requests merged by four authors and one reviewer. Um, there are currently 10 open pull requests amongst all the repositories associated with Blinka, and there were two closed issues by two people and three open by two people, leaving a net of 97 open issues. There were 11,092 PyPI downloads in the last week, 13,353 PyWheels downloads in the last month, and we are at 133 boards. And that's it. Awesome. Thank you, Melissa. Next up is Hug Reports. Hug Reports is a chance to highlight folks in the CircuitPython community and beyond for doing awesome things. I'll start, and then we'll go down the list in alphabetical order uh, to give everyone a chance to participate. If you are text-only or missing the meeting, then I'll read the notes from the document for you uh, when we get to your turn in the list. So I will uh, get us started. Um, this week, Hug Reports for me, thanks to Dan for discussing and looking into a deprecation warning that was sent by Read the Docs for some of our repos. Um, hug reports for Zarnalin, Bear, and Tyeth, all for asking some really good questions and offering help with uh, some stuff that I was working on during the stream over the weekend. Hug report for um, Professor Gallagher for making many good, for asking, I should say, many good questions about using PyCharm with CircuitPython development uh, and for working on uh, some instructional content that covers that process, as well as loads of other neat stuffs. Uh, for anyone who hasn't seen Professor Gallagher's videos on YouTube, there's uh, loads and loads of cool stuff over there. Uh, and then a group hug for everyone. Uh, next up, I will remember to take a time tamp, stamp this time, and I'll read for C. Grover, uh, who's text only this week. C. Grover says, uh, hug report for DJ Devin 3 for the exceptionally helpful API guide published on the Learn Playground. The hints and tricks therein will be very useful as I transform some weather app APIs from openweathermap.org to a new truly free provider. Uh, C. Grover also has a group hug. Next up is uh, Dan. Okay. Um, thanks to Scott for uh, completing essentially the expressive BLE implementation uh, with the pairing and bonding stuff. Uh, I'm looking forward to everybody trying it out and seeing how well it works. And I, um, it's a big step toward the 9.1 release. And thanks to Sola85, who worked on fixing uh, ESP ULP. It wasn't working at all in Stricker Python 9, and it looks like it was a nice PR. Fixed that. 
Okay. All right. Thanks, Dan. Uh, next up is DJ Devin 3. I'll read for, and after that will be Maker Melissa. Uh, DJ Devin 3 has a group hug, and I will pass it over to Maker Melissa next. Might have uh, some trouble if you are speaking. It's showing still uh, muted, Melissa. Just in case, so I will uh, I will read your hug report here for the week. Uh, Melissa has a group hug, uh, and then I'll try again on status updates. Uh, next up is Sam Benny, who's text only. Sam says a hug report for Toddbot for mentioning MIDI beat clock and documenting the USB MIDI stuff in Circuit Python tricks. Uh, next up is Scott. Hello, hug to Sola85 for re-enabling ULP support in 9x. Uh, props to Bill 88 t for pointing out to them that the uh, Adafruit has their own ESP IDF repo, and Sola was able to change that so that they could do both uh, RISC-V and the FSM, which is awesome. Um, Hugs to Tyeth for testing BLE on ESP, and for Bablock. Uh, B for removing the unused display stuff. All right. Thank you, Scott. Next up in rounding out the hug reports is Tyeth, who's text only, so I'll read. Uh, Tyeth has a hug report for Scott for stretching the BLE work on Friday's stream. Uh, it made a, for a great weekend of testing. Uh, a hug report for Maker Melissa for the web Bluetooth dashboard and other such gems. I always seem to be finding new ones just when I need them, uh, like now when I'm trying to recreate the Bluefruit apps in the web. Uh, Tyth also has hug report for Dan for a quick review, doc suggestion, and merging of the updated GitHub actions for building a custom or normal uh, build from a single board. It now supports forks and branches instead of just tags, which is super cool. Uh, Tyth also has a uh, group hug. Uh, you lot are always coming up with wonderful things. Help code ideas all appreciated. Uh, so thanks to Tyeth for that. And that is it for hug reports. Next up is status updates. Status updates is our time to tell folks what we're up to individually. I'll start, then we'll go through the list alphabetically. When I call on you, you can take a couple minutes, talk about what you've been doing since the last meeting and what you'll be up to until the next meeting. This is also a good opportunity to provide tips and tricks that are relevant to whatever folks are working on. If a discussion becomes too long for status updates, we can move it to in the weeds section. So I will get us started and then uh, Dan will be after that. So for me this week, uh, I was uh, reviewing a PR that changes uh, circup to use pyproject.toml instead of setup.py. Uh, which is not something I had a lot of knowledge about. So I also went on quite a bit of a reading and learning adventure through the packaging documentation, figure out what all the different um, configurations and options are inside of there. I was doing some test installs locally. Uh, I noticed that it, when it gets installed, it has 0.0.0 .0 for the version. So I was looking into different ways to fix that and uh, did manage to find one, but I do still want to poke around and make sure uh, that it's actually uh, the correct one for our case. Uh, and then uh, I started looking into, but we still need uh, some more work or need to take another look at the actions task inside Circup uh, because the current way that it builds is using a now deprecated um, setup pi uh, run of some sort. Um, and so that needs to change over. So um, there's a little bit more uh, to do on that front, but I started it this past weekend. Uh, I submitted a PR for the initial implementation of WW Shell over on the Circup repo. Uh, and then I got uh, into the very, very beginning steps of adding a uh, BLE workflow support into Circup and WW Shell. I was able to successfully get the Bleak module installed. And uh, after getting my device right up next to my antenna, I was uh, able to successfully see that device on a scan as well. So I haven't gone further than, than that just yet, but I uh, am interested in uh, moving forward on that too, so that we can use Circup and WW Shell with Bluetooth devices, uh, as long as you have a computer that supports that um, Bleak module at least. And the last thing I've got was looking into some uh, read the docs deprecation 
uh, notice that they sent us about redirecting the uh, the slash URL with nothing after it. Um, they used to do some some special redirecting in certain cases, and some of our very old versions of libraries uh, will no longer redirect correctly, but they are uh, really, really old, and all of the recent ones do, so it turns out not to be too big of a deal. Um, next up, I will send it over to Dan, and then I'll read DJ Devon 3 after that. Okay, um, so I fixed a bug um, in on NRF boards that had to do with um, there's there's this there's this uh, list of event handlers that handles events that are coming in and various kinds of Bluetooth events, and that list was not being garbage collected properly. So uh, items on that list were ac were turning into garbage and being reused by mistake, which was bad, <laughs> and so. This bug has probably been around for a while, but it was somebody came up with a really easy test case, and that was very helpful. And so that's been fixed. Um, I'm updating the building circuit Python learn guide to discuss uh, differences that have to do with building on an Ubuntu 2404, which is also kind of the latest Debian stable release, or maybe not even quite. And um, there are a number of things that are different, such as needing to use a virtual environment for um, Python and problems with versions of tools and things like that. And maybe I will make a generic, here's how to install Python um, page on, um, which would be suitable for putting in that guide and also for mirroring on other guides. As Scott uh, mentioned, uh, we've got four issues that are left on the 910 milestone. So uh, once those are finished and no new ones have showed up, we will start making release candidates. And that's it. All right. Thanks, Dan. Uh, next up is DJ Devon 3, who's text only, so I'll read. And after that is Jeff. Uh, DJ Devon 3 says, finished up a PR for the RA8875 driver. Uh, for reading pixels from the display. Uh, also added a screensaver and other minor updates to the library because the device only allows one hardware layer while in 800 by 480 with 16-bit color. A lot of tricks will need to happen for software layers. Uh, this is a step in the right direction. Uh, next up is Jeff, and after that is Justin. Hello. It's been a little while since I was in one of these meetings. Um, so I've been working on MP3 streaming on the ESP32 S3 Metro. I've got it playing a 128 kilobits per second MP3 file that I'm serving from a computer on the local network. That seems to be nice and reliable. Uh, but playing a stream from Soma.fm has a lot of glitches. Uh, and I've been pursuing why that is. I am uh, doing trying to profile the code by uh, setting GPIOs when I enter or exit a certain function. If you scroll up a little bit, you'll see a picture from that. And from that, trying to understand where the long pauses are coming from. And I think I have a little bit of an idea of what's going on. Um, also on my list is to just try streaming an MP3 podcast. Um, and then I've also got a problem where when I hit Control C, the board hard faults. And I suspect that has to do with it then enters interpreter cleanup. And if the socket is closed and the background test tries to access it, that may not be handled properly. Uh, but that's just a guess. I don't have that all figured out yet. And uh, for personal stuff, I my choir that I'm in has three performances on the Pride weekend here. So that will probably cut into my uh, work time to do some final rehearsals. And that's what's up with me. Thanks. All righty. Thank you, Jeff. Uh, next up is Justin. And after that is Maker Melissa. Yeah, so I kind of tried my best this week to spend some time helping um, Discord users. Um, one of the outcomes to that was a user was struggling to get the matrix portal, the M4 matrix portal, to work with uh, Bluetooth, um, and found an open. He had found an open issue for that, and so um, with some back and forth, found a way to uh, pass and leave Wi-Fi off. Um, and even the thought of having that library actually be able to enable Bluetooth by default as well. Um, and I also started working on a repo to kind of start running a large set of network tests um, to kind of build out a does it work table um, going across different methods, client, server, SSL, NTP, etc. And then across different boards. Um, and ideally, as a guy that 
people can go look at to go like, oh, I have this chipset. Can I go do this thing? So it's kind of fun. If I get a good spot, I will share it and people can look at it and see if it's something that we'd want to put in docs or something like that. That's what I got. Cool. Yeah, that sounds uh, that sounds quite useful. Thanks, Justin. Uh, next up is Maker Melissa. Hello. Um, <clears throat> this week, I continued working on the CircuitPython code editor and updated the code for the raw paste mode to make it much more reliable. Uh, I also added a feature so that certain code interactions are hidden from the user, such as file listing by not outputting to the serial terminal component. And that's it. All right. Thanks, Melissa. Next up is Sam Blenny, who's text only. So I'll read. Sam says... Uh, released a beta version of a plain text MIDI sequencer module, which might be a useful source of ideas for people thinking about how to do sequencing with synth IO. Uh, Sam also says, wrote up a playground guide about the MIDI sequencer thing. And there's a link here if anyone would like to check that out. Uh, next up and rounding out the status updates is Scott. Hello. Okay, so <laughs> I was very surprised to come in today and see that the ESP VLA changes were merged in. It was great. I kind of like did it as a PR on Friday during my stream just because I thought it was done and it got merged in, so that's great. Um, I'm following up with enabling. I'm going to do the VLA workflow on the S chips. I don't think it's enabled, so I'm going to turn that on. Uh, and with that will come more testing. Um, I'm fixing the e-paper display bug right now. Uh, that should be super quick. And I'm doing it on a C6, um, and I want to do, I want to enable alarm on the C6 as well. So I might actually give that a shot today. Um, it may not be too bad. And the, so that's kind of like the three things I'm doing is like a little bit more BLE work, fixing this e-paper bug, and uh, looking at low power on C-series chips. And then I did, uh, I've been kind of Hacking on poking at the Stemma G0 stuff, which is like uh, Cortex M0 as a coprocessor over I squared C. Uh, I was working on that on Friday, and I kind of want to finish working on that because it's interesting. And um, talking with Lamore today, she seemed kind of interested in it too. So I uh, may spend a, an hour on that today if I have a little bit more time. Uh, I am out next Friday, and Tim, I will check with you about uh, deep diving uh, for that too. Yeah, sounds good. We can talk. Uh, all right, that is the end of status updates. So next up, and to round out the meeting, is in the weeds section. Uh, as a reminder, in the weeds is an opportunity for long-form discussions. These can either come out of status updates, or they can be identified ahead of time and put into the notes document. If you do have any topics you'd like to discuss, please go ahead and get them put into the notes doc now. Uh, we do have one, so we'll start that one. And if uh, another one pops up while we're discussing, then we'll uh, go on. Otherwise, we'll wrap up. Uh, this week, the first one was mine, actually, so I'll read it. Um, and let me put a timestamp real fast. There it is. Uh, and basically, the, the, the core question I have is about s supporting older versions of uh, Python. Uh, in particular, I've been doing a lot of work in the Circup um, library recently, and with the change over to pyproject.toml, uh, I noticed that Circup is uh, still at least listing support all the way back to... to um, Python 3.6. I, I can't say as though I've done any testing to see if it actually works or not, um, but it, it at least lists that it should work back to 3.6, um, 3.7, and, and all the newer ones as well. So uh, the question is, do we want to keep supporting those old ones? Um, you know, extra information on that front. Python 3.6, the last security release was coming up on uh, three years ago, uh, September 2021. So I'm definitely leaning away from Supporting that one, even 3.7 uh, is about a year uh, into life at this point. Its last security update was in June of last year. So uh, personally, I think it'd probably be good to, to go ahead and drop support for that one as well. Um, in the Circup repo in particular, uh, the time that we're changing over to pyproject.toml, which is in the open PR, might represent a good time to do that just because we're already updating that file anyway. As far as I understand it, it'll just be cutting a couple of lines out of the new one. Um, if that is something we want to do and we want to decide on a particular version, uh, I'd also be happy to go around and check other repos. Um, I mean, a lot of them are the library repos, which we can maybe do some kind of automation if those need updated, but there are a few scattered about other ones that actually 
are made for PCs as well, like the bundle tool and a couple other things like that um, that I could check into and see if those have got old ones listed as well. Uh, and if they do, and we would like to update, I'd be happy to to go through and update those also. Um, although obviously they're not tied to the to circa up in the pyproject.toml changeover in the same way as that one is. Um, Jepler mentions here uh, Debian old stable is on 3.9 currently. Uh, Ubuntu 22.04, which is the old LTS long-term stable, that's on 3.10. Uh, I don't see much of a reason to support older than 3.9. However, technically, 3.8 does get security support for about five more months. And there's a source here to end of life date. So, um, yeah, sounds like we could maybe keep uh, 8, uh, 3.8 if we wanted to uh, for the next couple of months. And technically, it's still also supported by Python. Uh, however, it's coming up as well. And then 3.6 and 3.7 are both are both passed at this point. So um, does anybody else have thoughts or ideas around that? I, I think we definitely shouldn't support things that are already under life. Um, the question also is like, what if, are people going to use Circup with the with the default installed um, Python on Mac? So, um, yeah, that's good. Mac OS Sonoma is fine. Mac OS Ventura seems to have some very elderly stuff, at least on the Intel release. But maybe those people just should just upgrade. So I don't see any. I think three three nine would be fine. I don't know if there's some wrong issue about like things that, that's something that's not in three eight, but is in three nine. But I think three nine would be fine. Okay. Yeah, that's that's kind of where my head was at as well. So yeah. I'll uh, I will try that changeover and. Um... You know, once we make the change, if we also have somebody who's popping up on a particular OS or anything who's trying to use it on 3.8 and can't, then we can uh, we can help troubleshoot and potentially add it back for a couple of months if need be. But um, yeah, we'll uh, we'll try targeting 3.9 and up for now on that. Uh, and I will take a look around at some of the other um, some of the other repos as well to see if there's because I'm thinking there are a couple. Uh, for some reason, 3.7 is sticking out in my head as one that I've seen in some of the repos before, but I'm not sure which one, so uh, I'll put it around. I'm not sure about Blinka. Uh, it's oh, yeah. either 3.8 or 3.9. We had the Jetson, the NVIDIA Jetson was like stuck on 3.7. Oh, yeah. I have seen folks mention but that. I, but I think that that's their problem yeah. at this point. <laughs> yeah. It's kind of unsupported by NVIDIA now, so. Yep. I All right. Uh, Mac OS Ventura, uh, Sam mentions in the chat here, um, Mac OS Ventura on M1 is on a Python 3.9.6. So it looks like Ventura on an M1 at least will be, uh, will be in range for us if we do target 3.9. So that's good. Um, all right, I think that covers it. Uh, unless if anybody else has got anything on versions, uh, I will get started with the wrap up. All right, this has been the CircuitPython weekly meeting for June 3rd, 2024. Thank you to everyone who participated. Uh, again, if you want to help support Adafruit and CircuitPython and those of us that work on CircuitPython, consider purchasing hardware from the Adafruit shop at adafruit.com. The video of this meeting will be released on YouTube at youtube.com slash Adafruit. The podcast will be made available on major podcast services. It'll also get featured in the Python for Microcontrollers newsletter. Uh, visit adafruitdaily.com to subscribe to that if you like. The next uh, meeting is, I believe, at the uh, usual time on Monday, uh, 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern. That would be the uh, 10th of June. Um, so we will see you in a week. And uh, this, as always, this meeting is held on the Adafruit Discord, which you can join uh, adafru.it slash discord. If you'd like to be notified about any uh, changes when they occur to dates or times, you can ask to be added to CircuitPythonista's role on Discord. Uh, and that's it for this week. We will see you next week. Thanks, everybody.